Welcome to this video tutorial on how to properly create spot color PDFs. I'm going to go ahead and jump into it here with a, an envelope that was sent over that was created using Photoshop and the mode was the mode was lab color. I wouldn't have changed it to CMYK for the sake of time, but this was sent over using lab color. And even though the lab color was selected, I'll show you the PDF the PDF still created a CMYK file here Photoshop still has a CMYK file even though lab colors were, were selected your black and this other spot color here are both composed of process colors which is definitely not a spot color and this would be printing on a letterpress that only prints in two spots so what, how do we fix that? well I'll show you how to fix it in Photoshop and then I'll also show you a better way to create this file so like I said the first thing we do is we convert it from lab color to CMYK and the technique that we're using here which takes some time and this is why you'll see why it's better to do it a different way to create it a different way is to select the different colors and put them on, a, on their own channel so as you see our channels here now that we convert to CMYK we have our CMYK channels let's go ahead and go to select color range I'm gonna select this turquoise color here using the, the picker and as you see, it's, and you see in this little um, box here, it selected all the different imp components of this file that are this similar color. And I adjust my fuzziness to see which colors to pick up, and I found that this about 100 range is a good, good one to use. If you use it too high, it'll assume part of that color is in the background and have a haze of that spot color in the background, which is what we don't want. Select OK. It's going to create your selection here. Command C or Control C to copy. And then we're going to go here into the channels and select new spot channel. Sorry, you can't see that quite well. Let's select a new spot channel here. Uh, this was a, I don't know what color it's going to be, a spot. We'll call it spot one. And we'll select a color similar to what that color was, just so we, for our identification purposes, you will tell the, the printer what the spot actually is, what the PMS number is, click OK, and now we have our spot here. And what you could do is to know what the PMS color is, use the picker here, and then if you go to color libraries, Photoshop will automatically try and match the closest PMS color to the color that we have selected. So between these two, this one's probably the closest. So this is a Pantone 3262 coded, so you might want to write that one down. And we could even assign that here if we wanted to. 3262, close enough, anyway. Let's go ahead and do the black channel. Go back to select, color range. Let's select the, oh, first we have to go ahead and do our CMYK here because obviously our spot doesn't have that black color range select the black as you can see the black items are selected here uh, control C or command C do another spot channel this one we'll call black or spot black let's go ahead and pick something that looks something like black There. And we're done. We create the PDF. Save as. Let's pick PDF. And we'll save it. And of course, we want to use our Cedar Graphics output. And if we go to this PDF now, so if we go ahead and take a look at the PDF here, let's look at our output preview. And as you can see, now we have two spot plates. If we hover our mouse over there, you'll see that we have 100%. And when we created our spot channel, we should have made it 100%. Mine was already set to that, just so you know. And also for the black is 100%. We also have our process colors, but we shouldn't have to worry about that because we will only print the spot, we only use the spot plates. So we're good here. This works. But it's kind of strange. 
So let's go ahead and, and go over the better way to do this. So if we look, take a look here, we prefer using InDesign. And why? Well, we have a template already established for you so you can create a proper envelope, different envelope templates. This is the one for our number nine remittance. And all the information on where things are, where the folds are, where the glue is, is on a template layer. Turn it on and off if you want to. We also have some guides set up to help you to see where you should put things. I shouldn't put anything here. This would be there's no bleeds on on an envelope. It's already made it to an envelope, so you'd want to be aware of where the edges are and not put any information or any content on the edges. Here is the flap. You can see what the flap looks like, and don't put any information, any content here. And if you look also on the back side, this is where the glue goes. This is the inside of the envelope. And also the glue will stick here. Don't put any content here because when you peel it off to get the money out, it will rip the information off. You won't be able to read it. So we'll do all our work on layer one. And so I kind of started a little text box here. And what I want to do is assign it to a spot color. So that's very easy. It tells us what colors we have on our document. And we want to assign a new spot. So we want to assign a new, a new swatch. Let's go to this one. We'll call it. PMS1 or spot1 or whatever you want to call it and we'll go to color type is spot and let's check our Pantone let's go to solid coated because that's where our color was take a look here in Photoshop when I did my picker it looks like it's closest to Pantone 3262C back to InDesign let's look for that easier just to type it in. There it is. And now we have it that spot color. Do the same for black. Very simple. This way is much easier. Now you may say, well, how do I get my images? How do I get my little uh, star that I had here in Crescent? Um, you can build those in an Illustrator. You can do the whole file in Illustrator if you want because you can do the same thing. You can make a new swatch. You can call it a process color. And you can select your process color. Or call it, I'm sorry, call it a spot color. You can select your spot color the same way we did before and get our different values here. Um, but in, in, in uh, Illustrator, we can go ahead and take our vector art. And let's just make this um, here. And you can copy it. And you can paste it into InDesign. It will stay as vector art, which is very cool. That way you can use the, the easy typing and the templates and everything like that in your document uh, formatting and layout. In InDesign, you can still use your vector art. So we can size it. We can do different things. It's going to have the same attributes as it would in InDesign and in, in uh, Illustrator. And we can also make this a spot color. We could do the same thing. Well, we already have it established too. But if you wanted to, we could go ahead and select it. And now it's our spot color. You could make it black if you want much much easier much simpler to use and this is what we would recommend of course when you create your PDF using the Cedar Graphics presets it would create a PDF with only those two spot colors and CMYK percentages will be zero much easier much faster much simpler and we recommend using InDesign to create this file if you have any questions go ahead and contact us we'll be we'll do our best to help thanks for watching